Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, which means it's time for another video. And today I'm gonna do a video on a question that I got asked on a Q&A recently. And this was a question by Thomas Maloney, who's an incredible magician. If you haven't seen his interview or his five by five, go and check it out. And this question was all about a specific aspect of performing on stage. And one specific thing that honestly, I think a lot of people don't think about, which is, when you're performing on stage, getting spectators to come up and help you. Very, very, very vitally important question that a lot of people don't think about. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So here's the thing. When you first start uh, on stage, you, first, you know, a lot of magicians will start doing close up and then over time they'll... Uh, start gravitating towards stage magic. I love performing on stage, I really do. Uh, and one of the main reasons I love performing on stage is when you perform close-up magic, uh, no matter how good the audience is, every five minutes I've got to win over a new group. But when I'm performing on stage or parlor or to a big group of people, I, I win them over once and then I have them on side for the remainder of the performance, right? It's a big difference. So I love performing on stage. And you know, when people first start moving into stage magic, there's a lot of things that people think about. Uh, if, you're, you, if you've not really thought it through, you might just think of trick selection and what tricks are going to work and which tricks will play big and which tricks can I do on stage. If you've given more thought to it, you might start thinking about characterization and your character, your performing character. You might start thinking about the, the style of magic that you're doing and what you want the audience to, um, uh, to feel when you're performing. You might think about the tech side of things like the lighting and the sound. You might think about blocking and where everything should be and how you should stand and how you should walk on stage. You might think about vocal projection. You might think about where all your props are going to be so you don't look disorganized. There's a million different things to think about when you're on stage. And that's not even taken into consideration music choices, musicality, uh, uh, how the music's going to work, what you're going to do to play the music. All of this stuff is very, very important, right? But honestly, I think the single, um, or not the single most important thing, but one of the most important things, and definitely something that people forget about, is getting people to come up and help you on stage. Because when you're rehearsing your stage act, and I've done it, right? Uh, when you're rehearsing your stage act, and uh, you might be doing a full rehearsal. So you might be standing there going, right, okay, uh, I need someone to help me. What's your name? John, come on up, John. John, this is John, everyone. Give John a big round of applause. That's kind of how you uh, practice it, right? And the problem with practicing it that way is you're not giving any thought as to how that person comes up on stage, what you're going to say to get them up on stage, the process of them coming up on stage. All of that is very, very important. Um, and, and we don't think about that, right? Because we just want to get to the next part that we're rehearsing because we've, we've scripted up until that point and then we've scripted when they get on stage. That process of them coming on stage and getting them to come on stage is something that we don't really think about. Uh, and I, you know, when I first started working on stage, um, I was working with Russell Leeds at the time and we were putting together an illusion act and it was a comedy illusion act so there were lots of moments where there was lots of comedy and I was doing lots of moments where I wanted to have people up on stage and help me and the suit jacket escape was in it and all that sort of stuff. And I didn't really think much about bringing those people up and when we first started doing the holiday park circuit which is very unforgiving the holiday park circuit when I first started doing the holiday park circuit um, I really would struggle with people coming up on stage they just wouldn't come up and that's the big issue getting people up on stage because here's the thing right you have a couple of different types of members of the audience. The first type that you have are people that are in the audience and they don't really want to come up and help. They, they're, they're enjoying the show. They don't want to be the center of attention. They don't want to come up on stage and help you. And then you've got other people um, that, that may be a little bit too overly eager and it's like, yeah, I want to come up. And they'll literally just walk up on stage. I've had that in the holiday parks as well. And, you know, Thomas asked this question originally. And, and when I asked him about the question that he asked, he said, well, you know, a couple of times, because Thomas is new to performing magic on stage. He's just done a holiday park run, which has been very successful. But, you know, he's transitioning from close up to stage. And he said, one of the things I sometimes get a, a problem with, and I never thought this would be an issue, was getting people to come up and help. Because it's, uh, it's kind of like a ripple factor. And what I mean by that is if you 
pick somebody, if you say, right, can you and help me, can you come up and help me on stage? If that person doesn't want to do it and they refuse and they go, no, it's very difficult to get them to come up. You can't drag them up and force them up on stage. But by asking that question to that person and that person saying no, it shows everybody else in the audience that they don't have to come up if they don't want to. And so then you go to somebody else and say, will you help? No. Will you help? No. Will you help? No. And it can almost, it's so embarrassing. I've seen other magicians do it. Hell, I've done it. When I first started Holiday Parks, one of the very first shows I ever did, I, I asked someone to come up and help. They said no. I asked like six or seven people and it was a packed house. Everybody said no. And honestly, it was the most embarrassing moment that I'd ever had. I wanted the, the ground to swallow me up because it was just like, oh, I'm just standing on stage. This is boring. I'm just asking lots of people. And eventually one of the Ents team felt sorry for me and they came up on stage and uh, and they offered to help uh, help and it was just humiliating is a good way to describe how I felt at that point it was not a good feeling it was not a good experience I did not enjoy it so you need to think about how you're actually going to get somebody on stage and if you're planning your first stage show you really do have to think about what are you going to do what are you going to say to get people to come up on stage what's your plan what's your gambit and really this very much depends on your character and it depends on the type of person you are. Now, I've talked about my character at length on this channel. You know that I'm that sort of person that's kind of a bit of a sarcastic, quick-witted kind of guy. I'm not taking myself too seriously. I'm definitely not taking the show too seriously. I'm going to be taking the piss a bit, but I'm going to be taking my piss out of myself as much as I do everybody else. I'm doing it with a wink in my eye. There's nothing vicious about anything that I'm doing. And my goal is to have a lot of fun. That's kind of my style when I'm on stage so you know uh, 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 my favorite way of getting someone to come up on stage is looking at them directly in the eye uh, and and getting eye contact there and then and uh, and saying hey what's your name John nice to meet you John John I need you to help me but it's very very simple all I need you to do John is just do this that's all I need you to do and so John does that and you go wonderful of course you can come up and help john everyone give john a big round of applause fantastic so it's kind of a case of it's a very funny thing it's not mine it's an old bit but it's kind of like right i need someone to come and help me john i need you to help don't worry john it's very very simple i need you to do that put your hand in the air of course you can come up and help everyone give john a big round of applause as he makes his way up to the stage and and i'm not giving him the choice really I'm not being mean about it. I'm not saying, yo, mofo, you better come up on this stage right now before, you know, it's nothing like that. It's, it, it's just kind of, but I'm not giving him a choice. It's, it's a little bit like a sales technique. In sales, uh, when we talk about closing, we talk about being assumptive. And it's kind of like, you don't say to somebody when you've just spent 10 minutes on the phone pitching them to have you at their event, you don't go, so would you like me to come would you like to book me or not it's kind of a case of right okay so you've got all the information uh, I, uh we, i'm just going to go and grab the, the details and get that all booked in and secure the slot for you okay and it's kind of very assumptive well it's the same approach when i'm on stage it's a case of hey uh, john put your hand up of course you can come up on stage everyone give john a big round of applause now i've seen people before and like i say i've done this in the past where you go all right i need someone to come up and help you sir will you come up and help me by asking, will you come up and help me? The answer is very, very simple. No, no, I will not come up and help you. It's easier for them to say no. So if they've got any trepidation, if they've got any worry, if they've got anything like that um, inside of them, by, by saying, will you come up and help? It's very easy for them to say no. And like I say, the first time someone says no, it can very easily cause a ripple effect around the audience. So you want to you wanna kind of not give them an option um at all the other thing that i found is a lot of the time when i'm doing my show the first couple of people that i address in the audience i don't bring them up on stage um so the first thing i do a lot of the time in my cabaret show is i do the vanishing bottle and with the vanishing bottle i uh, say hey uh, it starts off with a gag where i put my hand under the bag and i say name a number three ha oh, thank you very much which is a great way of establishing my character right um and uh, I, I, 
before that, when I do the warm up, a lot of the time when I do my warm up, I'm getting a couple of people involved. They're not coming up on stage. I'm giving someone a box to hold on to. I'm giving someone a key to hold on to. Then I'm going into a routine with a bottle where I'm getting two or three people, but none of them are coming up on stage. So there's a couple of things there. I'm getting people used to seeing me talk to people in the audience and also um, they can see that I'm not being vicious, I'm not being mean, I'm having fun with those audience members. Uh, yeah, we're, we're making it interactive, we're making it fun, but we're making it fun for the whole audience, not just for, uh, not just for, uh, you know, it's it's just not just mean. But the fact is, I'm asking them questions like, hey, I got this hand, I'm going to put the hand under the bag. When I start my fingers, I'd like to name a number from one, two, three, four, five. Could you name that number two? Two, amazing. Thank you very much. I'm here all week. I appreciate that. Um, and, and, and that gag shows that I'm interacting with people in the audience, but I'm not necessarily always bringing them up on stage. So when I get to the point where I'm bringing my first volunteer up on the stage, it, it, you know, it, it's a case of they're going to answer me, they're going to speak to me because they've already seen me speak to like five or six people, right? It's that yes role in sales. We call this a yes role. We're going to say yes, 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 yes. And and look, it's up to you the the actual words that you say. Like I say, a lot of the time I'll go, hey, put your hand in the air, John, right? Okay, John, give John a big massive round of applause as he makes his way up on stage. Um, sometimes uh, it might be a case of, right, I need someone to come and, and help. This is another thing that I do later on in the show. I say, right, I'm going to need someone to come up and help me. And I go down in the audience and I make a joke of it. I say, I'm going to get a lady to help me this time. So guys, you're safe. I'm going to get one of the ladies in the audience to help me. Um, I look And I look around and I say, I love when I say that, everybody looks down as if to say, if I don't look at him, he's not going to pick me. Nobody is making eye contact. And as I say that, I'm walking forward and smiling to say, nobody's making eye contact, especially you. And I look down at the person next to me and I say, especially you. They then start to laugh. All of their friends start to laugh. And, uh, and I go, hey, you know, can you do me a favor? I'd love you to come up and help me on stage. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Now, if somebody looks a little bit nervous uh, and you're out in the audience and you're bringing them up on stage, uh, one nice thing to do is to switch off your mic pack and just do a stage whisper and just say, hey, I'm going to make you look like a million dollars. Please don't worry about it. You're going to be absolutely fine. I'm not going to get you to do anything silly. That's something I've done a couple of times. If people look a little bit nervous as I'm bringing them on stage, um, that's something to consider as well. Your goal is to make people feel at ease and not make them feel stupid. If you bring somebody up on stage and you're, you're, you're being vindictive and mean and making them look very, very stupid and they feel uncomfortable, and that's going to get picked up on by the rest of the audience and nobody will come up and help at that point, right? So it's, it's, it's really, really important to keep them, uh, to make them feel comfortable. And if that means that you have to switch your mic pack off as you walk up on stage, then so be it. Um, now, the other important consideration when we're talking about bringing people up on stage is that 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 can be a lot of dead time. What I mean by that is depending on the size of the venue that you're performing in, uh, it can be a lot of dead time bringing the person up on stage, especially if you're working in a theatre. Um, if you're working in a theatre and there are rows of seats, obviously, and you pick somebody right in the middle of a row, everybody has to move in order for that person to walk up on stage. So to cause minimum disturbance, one thing that I would say is try to pick somebody where you can see there's a clear path for them to get to the front. So if you're performing in a theatre, make sure that they're on the edge of uh, a row or that you can very easily get them up. If uh, they're in a room and there's lots of tape, make sure that there's a clear path that they can walk through. That sort of thing is very, very important because you don't want to have like a five minute wait while they get on stage. I remember John Kimmo saying to me once, um, he said, hey, uh, you know, every uh, second that there's no talking and nothing going on, it's dead time and you don't want any dead time. And it's absolutely true. So there's a couple of different ways of covering that dead time. If it's looking like it's only going to take them five or 10 seconds, if you're standing on stage and you're asking them to come up and they're saying yes, and they're walking up on stage and it's only going to take five or 10 seconds, you might want to turn around and say, right, okay, everyone give John a big round of applause as he makes his way up on stage. Now, if he's taking a little bit longer, which can happen sometime, let's say he's got caught or I don't know, something's happening. You go, you want to carry on presenting. So let's say you're doing a cube routine. You say, right, okay. Now, when John comes up on this stage, uh, he's going to help me 
with something amazing. I have 16 Rubik's Cubes here. John's going to come up on stage. He's going to help me do something with these 16 Rubik's Cubes that's going to blow your mind. Oh, here he comes. Everyone, give John another round of applause as he makes his way up on stage. Fantastic. John, nice to have you here. Thank you very much for helping. Right, so you want to keep that moving. Now, if it looks like they're a little bit further away, you might want to have a piece of music as they walk up on stage. Uh, so you might want to have a piece of music, like a stinger that's 5, 10, 15, 20 seconds long, that plays as they make their way up on stage. Stage. So as they're coming up on stage, you've got this music playing. Honestly, music covers everything. So music is a great way to cover dead spots in your performance. So if they're coming up on stage and you know it's going to take them a few seconds, you can hit that music track immediately. And on the subject of music, you know, I do a, a trick in my show that involves four people coming up on stage. Now, when those four people coming up on stage, if I'm performing or uh, working in a big venue and I've got four people coming up on stage... That can be a, um, you know, that can take a while, right? That can take a, a while. Of course, I'm going to have to go in the audience and pick four people in this particular routine. It's always four men, so I have to pick four men. So what I will do is I'll have a piece of music that will run about 30, 40 seconds. And as I, uh, and, and I'll have that music playing as I'm in the audience. Now I can talk over the music, but that music's playing the entire time. So for this particular track that I'm, uh, trick that I'm talking to you about, I play Mission Impossible which I just think is a great piece of music, and it runs for about 45 seconds. So I would present it as, right, guys, I'm now going to try and do something incredible. I'm going to do the most amazing piece of mind reading that you've ever seen. Now, to do this, we are going to need four people to come up on stage. Uh, so I'm going to come in the audience. I'm going to get four people. I'm going to get four men for this. Ladies, you're safe right now, but I'm going to get four guys to come up on stage and help me. Uh, here we go. And here we go is the cue for the music to start, and the music starts, and as the music starts, they go out into the audience, and I'm tapping them on the shoulders I'm tapping them on the uh you know you, you can you come up and help me fantastic and hey what's your name James James come up and join me up on stage you go over there I'll meet you up there in a minute jump up on stage and and again it's been assumptive but because four people on stage is going to take a while for me to bring them up on stage having that music playing while I'm doing that is just going to cover that dead time which is really important so the key points is be uh, be assumptive um, don't be a dick because people are not going to want to be on stage if you're a dick. So, um, you know, show them that you're going to be treating them with respect. Be assumptive. Um, have music playing to cover it if you need to. Uh, make a joke of it. You know, I've got five or six different ways that I get people to come up on stage. Uh, it, but the most important thing is just make sure that people realize that you're being serious. You don't want to be in that situation where somebody says no, because that is going to cause the ripple effect. Now, the other thing that you can do, and this isn't possible at every event, but something else to consider, something else that you can do is you can do close-up magic before the event. Um, now, a lot of the time when I'm doing corporates, I'll get booked for an hour close-up first. So I'll do an hour close-up at uh, dinner. And uh, and then I'll be doing the stage show after dinner, right? So I'm going to have an hour to get around as many tables as I can. And I'll start with the first two rows back. And my goal here is while I'm doing close-up magic, I'm going to establish credibility. I'm going to let people know that I'm good uh, because that way they're going to be looking forward to the show a little bit later on. I'm going to show that they're going to be, I'm going to put across my personality. My personality in the close-up has to be the same as the personality that they're going to see on stage. But more importantly, I'm looking for people that I know will be up for a crack. I'm looking for people that I know are going to be up for a good time, that are having a laugh. And they're going to be mentally noted as to where they are. Sometimes I'll even say, hey, I'm doing a show a little bit later on. I, I might bring you up on stage. And, uh, and they're going to go, no. Uh, but you can tell they say yes. Now, if they say no and they mean no, you know that you don't want to do that, right? Uh, but if you get a chance to do close-up magic before the show, that always makes things so much easier. Now, that's not always possible. A lot of the time I'm booked and I'm just going out cold on stage. And, you know, I don't have the advantage of performing close-up before I go on that stage. And that's fine. Um, but But if you do have... That, uh, that if you do have the option, it's great to be able to throw that in there. The one other thing that I'll say, and, uh, and this is something else that's worth actually thinking about as well, is um, <clears throat> when you uh, are performing on stage, you're going to get experience. You're going to get times where you go, right, I'm going to need someone to come up and help me. And everybody will point to one person. There'll be a table that will go, this guy here, this guy here. And they'll point to a person. Um, that's great. That's all well and good. 
Uh, and sometimes you might want to pick that person. But if they look really, 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 really timid, like they don't want to be there, I'll walk over to that table and I'll pick the person that looks the most um, kind of up for it. That's going, oh, this person here, this person here. And I go, look, it looks like everybody wants you to come up, especially you. What's your name? James. James is just like pointing at you over and over again. James definitely wants you to come up. That's why I'm picking James. And it's a big laugh to everybody there. It's a big laugh to everybody in the room. But now I've got, I've got, I've got this guy up and uh, I can tell that he's going to be up for a good time as opposed to, uh, to picking the person that obviously doesn't want to be up on stage that's something else to consider as well um that you want to be careful when you're picking people uh, from the second that i walk out on stage um you want to pick the right person i'm looking around at the audience i'm looking around for people that look like they're having a laugh look like they're having a good time uh, because the right person in a when you bring somebody up on stage and you're doing an interactive piece the right person can make a performance. The wrong person can break it. And if you bring the right, per the wrong person up on stage and they're just not playing along and they're not playing ball and you just can tell they don't want to be there, that's a very difficult situation to deal with. And it's, it's something you don't really want to have to deal with. Now, you are going to have to deal with it. Anyone that's performing on stage will have dealt with this a million times, but you don't really want to deal with it, if that kind of makes sense. So... Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think I've pretty much covered everything. I've covered the close-up magic. I've covered um, picking the right person. I can't reiterate enough picking the right person. If you pick the wrong person, like I say, it could be a lot more difficult. You pick the right person and the show could, the, the act will be 20 times, a million times better than it is. You get somebody who really plays along. And a lot of the time, you know, I, I, I will pick the right person. And I've actually performed in front of magicians in the past and they've turned around to me and they've said, oh, you got the right guy, didn't you? And it, or that you got the right person to come up and help. And I'm like, well, that's kind of experience because I can tell immediately when I'm walking out and I'm looking around I can tell immediately if that person's going to be a good person to pick or not. Um, oh, another thing to consider is sometimes uh, if you're new to stage magic, but you're performing on a big stage, if the lights are in your eyes, you're not going to be able to see anyone, right? And, and you're going to have to pick blind. I would always advise you at that point to get the tech crew to turn the house lights up. So it'd be a case of, I need someone to come up and help me. Uh, can we have the house lights up for a minute? Fantastic. That way I can see you all. Let me see. And 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 then I can go into and picking the particular person. It's always useful to have the house lights up. Now, depending on the venue, depending on the environment, depending on a million different factors, that might not be always possible. But if it is possible, you definitely want to do that. You definitely want to be in a situation where you can do that. Um, yeah, and, and, and look, the only other thing that I can say is experience, flight time. I talk about this on the channel all the time, but the more experience you have, um, the more flight time you have, the better you're going to be at this. I cannot tell you how important it is to get this right. I can't tell you how important it is. It's something that a lot of people don't consider when they're practicing. It's something that a lot of people don't consider when they're thinking about their act and they're thinking about their performance. But it's something that's vitally, vitally, vitally important. Picking that right person and, and, and also having the ability to ad lib um is 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 also vitally important you know scripting is 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 very important obviously um you know th th this is not a video for scripting and so on and so forth but i think that uh you know you have to be able to ad lib you know uh, i remember somebody who's an expert at this is mark bennett mark bennett is absolutely brilliant every time i watch him at smoke and mirrors and he uh, uh he will just just ad lib like crazy and it's fantastic because the first five or six minutes of his show is him just talking to various members of the audience and uh and and, and just you know like ad libbing replies and he does it so well he's like a stand-up comedian but it also helps him later on because when he's bringing people up he's already spoken to two or three members of the audience maybe even more and he kind of has a rough idea of who he's going to pick all of these things are very very important but trust me if you're new to stage magic or if it's something you've been doing but maybe you haven't had that much experience at it Think about how you're going to get people up on stage because it's the one thing that nobody thinks about but is vitally important.
So there you go, guys. That's another 5x5. Five five. Not 5 It's not 5x5. Five five. I was thinking about the next video I need to film. Uh, that's another video in the bag. Do me a favour. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Because obviously, this channel exists for you guys. And if it wasn't for you, this channel wouldn't exist. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And please, 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 if you haven't already done so, join The Netrix. www.thenetrix.com. It's my online streaming platform for magicians. And, uh, you know, it's something that I, I really passionately believe believe in people ask me all the time how can you uh yeah you know how can you um support me uh, the best way is by uh, trying the metrics out for a month or two and seeing what you think there's so much content on there and we're adding new content to it anytime all the time anyway uh that's enough of that i will see you again soon with another video thank you so much for watching my name's craig from magic tv mm -hmm.